Folks, welcome back to So Bad It's Good, presented by Betches Media. Today, this is so exciting. Uh, I got to do her show on YouTube a while back, and I just had the best time. And I remember still giggling. This is pre- this is pre Vanderpump this season. It was uh, our favorite Joe had released like an Instagram story about where she was coming from and what she was hoping and the positivity that she was hoping to inspire. So it'll be great to catch up with our guest about where we think Joe is headed because she's really a breakout star of this horribly hellfire season of Vanderpump Rules. Uh, What she does, uh, our guest is amazing. You need to go, if you don't already, go subscribe to her YouTube page. And she does these live streams. I was just watching one. Now, like, I don't get to watch these and I try to actually stay as far away from them as possible because I don't, I don't want my bad jokes to get mixed up with somebody's good jokes. Like, I don't want to, like, ever take from somebody. But I will say this. At least two to three times a week, I will get, you've got to talk to this guest. You've got to talk to this guest. You need to have this guest on. On. And I'm always like, totally, yes. And then I go back to bed. Um, but today she is here and I was just watching her last recap and I was like, oh my God, you're in my head. And this is amazing. Um, so let's, without further ado, let's get into this. Her name is Jolene Lunzer. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Ryan. I'm so excited. Just as you were saying that people tell you that um, we need to talk. Uh, that's the reason, you know, I reached out to you because people are like, oh my God, you and Ryan Bailey, you guys are on like the same wavelength, but I'm similar yeah. to you in that as a stand-up comedian, people ask me, do you watch a lot of other comedy? I'm like, no, because I don't want to uh, absorb stuff and then yes. think, oh, this is mine. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's weird. So like, but it was so refreshing to watch you and be like, yes. And I can see why mm-hmm. people love you so much. Uh, because even last week people were like, have you heard Jolene's Joe? And I was like, I have not, but there's a chance I'm going to hear it very soon because we all have our interpretations of Joe, the character. And and by uh, by the way, Jolene doesn't just cover this. She covers pop culture. She covers everything. So it's not just this, you know, she puts up, but also, by the way, I am just so fascinated. I told you this last time with the streaming because it is something that I don't do, but you are throwing up pictures during your recaps. You are interacting with the audience, which always seems to me like I'm sure it could be uh, tedious at times, but it also seems refreshing because sometimes when I'm locked in this cave at like one in the morning, it becomes really isolating. And I feel like I'm going crazy talking about Tom Sandoval. So your <laughs> production, it's like a full show. Like it's, it's, it's really, really cool. You guys, you need to check it out. I mean, check out this too, but you need to check that out. <laughs> How is your mental health? Because I feel like we went from last season and then it never really seemed to end even after the season ended and now we're in a new season and now we've added the valley on top of that how are you doing not well i'll be honest um (laughs) i think you and i not well uh, bitch not well not well bitch uh it is so crazy because the season i thought we were going to get with vanderpump i really thought this was going to be the girls coming together the women of the show coming together finally the toms have been (laughs) exposed i know that is like my silly little you know uh believe in feminism mind and i'm like there's no way they could fight with each other we're gonna put spells on the guys we are gonna hex them to hell the witches of weho are coming back and instead we have sheena like why didn't you tell me about dancing with the stars and you know lala i want to be softer not today bitch don't do it now (laughs) next season gets softer not now I, I just feel like you're you're so right. This was like served up on a plate. Like, listen, this can be about taking the men down. We have yep. all the evidence. The Watergate has been exposed. Like, it's right here. And instead, we are now caught up in a season of the women tearing, uh, not even tearing each other, kind of tearing Ariana down. And on top of that, it's going to pass the show. We have Lala coming out against Katie, coming out against Ariana at the reunion. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like we have, like, we see it right here. And then we've unleashed a holy demon with Scandaval because Jax is back. And oh. I, I, I've now had to, in the last week go, God, I guess I have to rethink everything. And I've now come to the conclusion, I guess the biggest mess wins. That's what we want to watch. But I hate that we make them rich in the process. I hate that we make them successful. Yeah. 
No, completely. And I think that the Valley, the good thing about the Valley is that it finally is showing people that just because Jax knew how to monetize Scandival and say the right things doesn't mean that uh, Jax has changed. He's still the same Jax because no. I've heard so many people during Scandival like, oh my God, Jax has grown. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, Jax? Are you talking about the same Jax? Because <laughs> he has <laughs> not. This dude will never change. He's like 80. <laughs> Well, I feel like people have to rationalize it to themselves. Like the, yeah. the reason why I watch is because Jax has grown. And I'm like, no, that's not the reason you watch. Don't try to put like Jax is not grown. And by the way, how comforting is, is it as a woman that you have Jax Taylor back on your screen uh, talking to you about your bodies and oh. uh, having children out of wetlock? That must be comforting as a woman that somebody finally a strong man comes forth mm -hmm. and really tells the women what they should be doing. Yeah, I know we've all just been waiting for more mansplaining. If that's not already <laughs> in so much of, you know, if you live in the U.S., you know, in our politics and things where now Jax is like, here's what I think motherhood is. It's like, sir, go do the <laughs> hockey marketing and shut up. I could not stand him coming for Kristen in the premiere about motherhood when your relationship is literally falling apart. And I know that. He, that's, see, that's, <laughs> it's so perfect. It's like, that's what makes it so funny is that it's like Vanderpump, the, the ecosystem exists on being a hypocrite now and it, being mm -hmm. a man and being a hypocrite. And if you have those two things, you are going to rocket into stardom at this period of time. But th at the same time, I feel like the, the ladies had an easy layup and they can't, they can't complete the play. They can't get like, I, I just get, what is your take right now on I, what is happening? Why the women have fallen apart and are going for Ariana. Like they, they are doing their, they will make her a villain by the end of the season. And the audience yeah. seems to be doing the same thing sometimes. Well, I kind of feel like it, there's been so much propaganda leading up to this. And we saw this coming preseason that Ariana, it's very similar to stereotypes that follow women, no matter what we do, where we go. Even when you are the victim of something and cheated on, you are still the villain because you're too bitter. Yeah. You're re you're 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 succeeding too much. You're not crying enough. You're crying too much. It's like Ariana couldn't win either way. So I think it's kind of a societal con conditioning for us to react this way toward a woman. And then I I do think there's a lot of pressure from production this season because having Lisa Vanderpump basically tell. On camera, Sheena and Lala, oh, darling, if you guys don't befriend, you know, Sandoval, he could hurt himself. It's like, he's not going to hurt himself. I am, uh, this man was touring with his shirt off, making jokes about Scandable and singing horrible karaoke. I needed to make money, Jolene, Jolene. <laughs> I needed to make money, dude. You don't understand. I was broke, dude. No, it's because How he pays much? every one of his bandmates like a full salary. Like it's, dude, that's yes. not our issue at all. Yes. Uh, and there's it, no way you are making money to pay your bills with this nine piece band and a crew and Jason Bader sitting there with a laptop on his lap through the entire podcast of Everybody Loves Tom, but never touching the laptop. He is getting scammed like you. he always does. <laughs> I heard you <laughs> He's say not good. She said that about Jason on the thing I just watched. Oh. And, you know, I, it is so true. Tom has the Everybody Loves Tom podcast and Jason sits there with a laptop on his. And by the way, you know what? I know and I don't want to be. I'm trying not to be mean. And by the way, I also love with the beginning of your recap where you point out to everybody, and I know you probably now have to point that out through comments and all that, is that these are roasts. We're also like trying yes. to joke about things. And also if we have disagreements, if you like Tom, that's your burden. Like that's your, like we can all still get along. This is just my take. And I love that you point out, this is my take. We can all have differing of opinions, but sometimes I think it's like, man, this is so obvious. But Jason, I think what he does is I do this a lot because I'm a pear-shaped man is that I think he puts it out there to like, feel like he's hiding his body. Like that's my theory on it because all mm. that's why I'll wear jackets all the time or something. So I, as a, I don't know. That's what I think. Uh, maybe I I'm, think he's hiding. See, maybe I'm doing I it. think he's really <laughs> loves Tom. He's like, dude, you Tom excited. is on fire again. You, you, this guy's <laughs> communicating so effectively right now. Oh my God. It's an excitement uh, bone, Lisa. Ryan. We all know we get him. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa said, you're right though. Lisa is so funny is that she literally guilted the ladies into forgiving Sandoval, but she also made it, she made them, I was, she made them think it was their own idea. So she had that Sheena and Lala sit down and then literally yeah. like within the episode into the remaining, like Sheena's now doing exactly what Lisa said, 
but never really attaches Lisa to it. Now it's like Sheena realizes how deep of a friendship her and Tom Sandoval had all of a sudden. She didn't realize it over the over the times they weren't filming, but when the cameras went up and then Lisa said something and then Lala went in, I, I don't understand. I feel like they're, like I don't believe in the Illuminati, but I feel like there's like a Vanderpump Lenati or something that Lisa heads mm-hmm. up that she is offering out spots for these people to change their minds when I think this is so easy. Like this is so easy. And it doesn't mean Tom has to leave the show, but like he keeps saying, he's like, I pay the price every week, dude. Every day I pay. You, oh my li- God, you barely, right. you barely paid a price. On him is so nice. It's so subtle, but it's so there with him because Tom's, I can't get his voice down like you can, but he's very like, I did. Ah, I am. Yeah, ah. what you do. I was listening to you. you <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that so much. You're like, oh, and I was like, that's so true. Well, see, I always noticed, and this is even before Scandal, there was like, the tiniest, tiniest of lists. Like, like, I mean, just, I mean, you could barely pick up on it, but like, you know, like you, you take the little thing that you notice yeah. and you exploit it and make it so much bigger. But yeah, people will always, Tom doesn't have a list. And I was like, I don't care if you, if he does or he not, does that's not. just how I view Tom. And it just, <laughs> everything is so exasperated. I don't know. I'm so confused, Jolene, because I just still don't think he <sighs> understands what happened, what he did. He and you he were, wants to be the victim. Talk- yeah. yeah, well, that's the thing. He'll apologize, but then he wants a better apology to him right after. He's like, why aren't they apologizing to me, dude? I don't get it, dude. She, like, Sheena actually kind of held his feet to the fire a little bit in that bar scene last week. And he immediately, like, cried. He immediately, like, I'm out of here, dude. I can't do this. DJ James Kennedy was like, come on, man. Pull it together. You're an idiot. Like, what? Uh, even DJ James Kennedy got into the action of, like, pull it together. Schwartz is even saying, just apologize, man. Just apo- even if you don't believe it, just apologize. W- do we? I don't think we'll ever have Tom fully understand what he did ever. I, at this point, I don't think it'll ever happen. No, because I no, because I think this could have been a season where really, I mean, anyone who makes um, who does something like Tom Sandoval did within life, there are consequences to that, and there are relationships and things you have to mend. And sometimes people don't have to forgive you, and they won't. But the problem with this season is we went. The first episode was amazing. Tom wasn't there. It was so good. It was Emmy award winning. I <laughs> loved it. Then Tom shows up and all of a sudden we have to placate him. We got to baby him. It's like, oh, Tom. And he's like, I was going to hurt Tom myself. Lisa. And it's like, I feel like he's weaponizing mental health. Uh, you're going to feel bad when you do bad things if you are a good person. I myself have done bad things. I myself have had to apologize. I myself have had to accept that yes. people might not forgive me and I might have severed relationships with my actions, but Tom Sandoval is not being held accountable whatsoever. And instead he's being given a pass where if you know, Ryan, you and I watch the Bravo shows, we've had other seasons where people have effed up in the friend group and they have spent a whole season trying to get back in. Look how long Kristen spent. Look how long Stassi tried to get back in. Kristen spent years. Kristen spent years. still trying. They put her in the valley. I mean, it's crazy. And this guy can't take one episode. That just shows he was so privileged in his edit for so long that he truly started to believe that he was the narrator. He was the good guy. He has this mentality that I've seen with reality star people. And um, it's very heroes versus villains. I watch, I'm a big Survivor fan. And Oh, are you watching the season? I am not watching this season. I'm behind oh like my two God. seasons. Okay, okay, okay. Because I'm just t- doing because I'm also Big Brother and I just I, I get a little overwhelmed with things. Yeah. But um what I saw on Heroes versus Villains, which is one of my favorite seasons of Survivor, one of like the fan favorites really started believing he was a hero. And so that whole season he ruined his entire reputation because he was like, Well, I'm a hero. You can't ever believe your own hype. Once you start believing your own yes. hype in anything you do, you're you're an asshole. And Tom has been believing his own hype for so long, and no one's gonna hold him accountable, unfortunately. My take is we don't need him. Honestly. Vanderpump rules can live on without either Tom, in my opinion. I completely agree with you, but I will say Lisa Vanderpump vehemently disagrees with you. And you can tell that like she is literally betting on the Toms and she's always yeah. bet on the Toms. And and that's what I find unfortunate. And it's not even the edit that this season's all about. It's the fandom reacting to the edit that sometimes, and I'm not even being hyper, you know, hyperbolic is that it scares the shit out of me. I'll go on, like, I'll like randomly go on Facebook to check out the, our Facebook group. And I'll see like other Facebook groups talking of like, 
she is horrible. My God, Ariana, like even the house thing, she got a house. Well, that seems pretty big house for a single person. Like they all of a sudden it was like, wait a sec, what the fuck is going on with people? Like it, I, I feel like it's like some kind of weird Truman show or we're being punked because I feel like this is cut and dry. And Ariana, my point to everybody every week is she told us from the jump, I'm not going to do scenes with Tom Sandoval. Yep. And I will move out when I can find a place and I have the money secured. He has done both of those things and we still find reasons week in and week out to hate her. Like Tom has had it relatively easy. In fact, if you really look at it, Tom has raised his stock in terms of being a, like the only thing Tom has going against himself is himself. If he does interviews on like the Nick Vile podcast or New York Times, oh, he God. blows it for himself every fucking time. <laughs> And that's what's like, st- like it's stunning to watch this guy get in his own way because he, like he's even like going rogue on Bravo and he'll do these things. And Bravo's even like, dude, what are you doing? We're trying to help you. It's like Jerry Maguire, help me help you. And he refuses to do it. But I just still am so curious about Ariana. And then the fact that this is a strong woman that, yes, has done her own bad things in her past. She's never been the full star of Vanderpump Rules. And by default, because of this situation, she's been thrust in this spotlight. And instead of like, you know, a lot of people are celebrating her, obviously, but her own castmates are uncomfortable with her having the spotlight by default. So you're seeing all of these cracks. And I guess the men I expected from, but I didn't expect it necessarily with the women. Yeah, unfortunately, I think it's, I, I hate to keep coming back to this because I know people are like, oh, rolling their eyes, but I think it's a lot of conditioning in us, even with our TV shows, whatever we experience in real life is definitely going to reflect on our entertainment. And we see tons of misogyny and we see a lot of internalized, you know, misogyny with within women. And I talk about this a lot is growing up as a young girl, we're not encouraged to kind of like play together and be a team where young boys, they, you know, f- from the jump where women are more pitted against each other in some way, whether it's subtly or it's very overt that we're used to that. So I think there's a lot of jealousy. We're also in a reality TV world where if I think with Lala, it's hundred percent jealousy. I think Lala struggles and I'm a sober gal myself. So I, I do empathize with Lala and her struggle to be soft and to find that medium because like we're seeing with Ariana, you can't win as a woman. They either want you to be down, crying, like victim, so sad. Yes. Ariana and Katie are just so strong. I don't agree with, I'm not like saying that, you know, some people think you just think they can do no wrong. No, I like that they can have flaws. That makes them human, you know? And I like that they are being um, authentically themselves and setting boundaries for themselves and uh, not being codependent and just, you know, doing the damn thing for themselves. Um, so I, I think that society and other women, it could be a little bit inside. People are like, I wish I could kind of be like that, but that's not always accepted from women or for women to behave that way. So we see Ariana and Katie just killing it. Like, screw you. The way Katie dismantled Sandoval with his stupid fake pre gym. I need a protein <laughs> shake. I got to shake. Oh, apology. Like, Show me some grace. She's like, no, because Sandoval has never shown grace is an in his, a t- entire experience on the show to any of the other cast members. I mean, look at his live performance. There's no grace there. There's no gracefulness. The guy doesn't know grace if it like slammed right into him. Like it it is so like, I always call that scene with Katie last week. I called it Darth Sandoval because Katie was like, there was like a dark air that appeared on like, what's up, Katie? I just got done with my workout. I'm making a protein shake. Come to the dark side, Katie. (laughs) I just took a nasty shit. Let's do this, Katie. And Katie's just there. (laughs) And he's always like, like, I can't fathom this. You can't fathom this, Katie? Fathomless? No. What? Fathomless? And you know that he really thinks like, well, I mean, she's kind of hot now, but I do her. Like that. And he thinks <laughs> that's going to win her over by being like, you look good, Katie. And she's like, yeah. I mean, you've never looked good. Okay. You're gross. Get out of here, St. Louis. Like she just, she just dismantled him. He's like, oh, okay. Well, you still look good. And you know yeah. that there are. The Toms have this weird relationship with the women on the show. They're, they either want to bang them. They're mad they haven't banged them. They're just <laughs> creepers. And what you were saying about Tom Sandoval kind of, uh, you know, um, crap in the bed every time he gets a chance. Did you, in that New York Times article, I didn't see a lot of people talking about this, but did you notice that his PR person or whatever was a 23-year-old TikToker who was like, oh, what show are you on? Oh, my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, like it was like it was the assistant to the actual crisis PR person, and they sent the assistant. And then in the course of the interview, the assistant was talking about how much she and her girlfriends loved Vanderpump Rules back in the day. And Sandoval was like, "Yeah, dude, those are the good days. Those are the good days." And she was like, "They really are." And the New York Times reporter was like. Oh my God, I can't believe she's not stopping this interview. Like the PR person that was there to watch Tom was like enjoying being a part of the conversation and forgot what she was there to do. And they made a point in the New York Times article at the very end saying that girl was no longer there when we talked to Tom. Like throughout the, it was like, she was my favorite guy. person because she was just kind of like, oh my God, your girlfriend lives here. That's so crazy. How old are you? Oh my God, you're like my dad's age. That's interesting. Uh, you just know that she was like sitting there like, is this my first gig? Because I think they said in the article, it was her first gig and i love that because as a 23 year old i remember my first gig and everyone i was like oh my god everyone's so old this is so weird wow <laughs> i i know we're jumping all over the place but i'm really excited to talk to you but i, I mean speaking of that we got to talk about Anne. you know the long-suffering oh. Anne who is going through her version of vietnam Anne. working for sandoval during <laughs> scandal and we see every week and she's just so like oh tom this is great it's just so great i'm passing she's passing out shots to literally like a who's who of a who the fuck are these people at a pool party like one of the creepiest it looked like the pool party from like boogie nights but not at the beginning of boogie nights <laughs> when everything was happy it was like when like mark Wahlberg started doing a lot of blow in boogie nights it looked like <laughs> that kind of pool party and Anne is just running around just wondering about her life choices and she has become a star in a, in a sense she has her own podcast and you can tell she's kind of excited to be getting this stuff but i also think about reality tv TV, I'm like, be careful, Anne. These shows yeah. and this kind of attention rots your brain. It turns all of their brains into pudding. And you've got to be careful. Like, what do you think? Even you like talking about this week in and week out, like it's mm -hmm. done something to me. Like, I don't even know. Like, it's it's made me a different person in a bad way sometimes. Like, how <laughs> do you like how do you fight I me? Mean, I know we joke about it a lot, but sometimes, like last week, it took me five hours to get through my recap because I would pause after yeah. like some scene and I would just think about it and just think like, man, how did we get here? We're not really learning from anything. Nothing's really changed. Uh, we see like, you know, there is this conditioning that is like set in, like you see the way the, the river is headed and I don't necessarily like it. And then on top of it, Jax is back. Like, how do you deal with this week in week out? Like talking about pop culture and Vanderpump. Well, a couple ways, right? So on my channel, we all treat it like it's a therapy session. So when you say, so I'm telling you, Ryan, you should do some lives because it's so nice to have the people in the live chat where it's almost like you're, you're all comforting each other. You know, you're commiserating together through all this. So that's how I feel like with the people who subscribe. My name is Jolene. I've been watching yep. Vanderpump for uh, <laughs> uh, 11 years now. Um, it's recently. a 12 step <laughs> program in itself as a sober chick. I get it. I love it. I think there's like power in that and also being surrounded you know, you see all these people online, they're like, yeah, Katie's the worst, Ariana's the worst, leave Tom alone, everybody's done this before, or the, my favorite are the people that leave comments and they go, move on already, get over it, oh, get over the thing that's <laughs> happening on the show right now, like, it's not like I'm talking about this 20 years from now, it's literally happening week by week. Well, that, and then it's like, and what? I don't like the word gaslighting, I know we overuse it, but sometimes I feel like I'm getting gaslit by the show and yes. some of the audience where I'm like, well, listen, maybe it is. I they mean, maybe like women do sign. <laughs> yeah, like women do. Like, I mean, now that I'm white, women do sign up to be cheated on. It's their fault. Like, it is their fault. And <laughs> listen, you're you're married, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because you stock the pins and batteries, I'm sure. And if you didn't, yeah, you probably obviously. wouldn't be married. If there is uh, paper towels out, my husband's starting the car. Okay. So rightfully I so. <laughs> rightfully so. Um, I yeah. always joke to my husband. I say, you know, it just this kind of thing, like falling into doing recaps on uh, on the silly shows I love, are is almost second nature because I feel like I've been roasting problematic dudes my entire life. So this is just an opportunity to do this, but with other people. And uh, so sometimes I don't know if this makes me a bad person, but I think it's kind of fun. And I like calling them out. I really do. <laughs> I find a lot of joy in my heart because I, I want to be there as a, a channel that other women can go to and be like, yeah, screw that dude or other men. Yeah. I don't want to be, you know, sexist, Ryan, you're more than welcome always on my channel. <laughs> and you know, but no, but I, will you say, no, I will say, I'll watch, I'll watch these dudes and it'll be like, oh shit. Like I'll even notice like, oh, I've done that before. I've done that before. And it's like this kind of like 
fuck you it actually if you watch it it does give you this kind of roadmap of how not to behave like mm -hmm. there is nothing that tom sandoval should be proud about right now and by the way if he just realized that and he doesn't need to be like oh i need my tail between my legs no but just like literally say i fucked up so badly i'm human i think back to those times the doing this seven month affair i think back to that and i think who the fuck did i become like what that's a real thought to me that would be an honest thought and that would be some place to build on but he's still trying to argue and this is the other thing I wanted to talk about. Like even in this past week's episode, he tries to argue and show Tom pictures. that he's like, we were so happy then me and Raquel, we were so happy. And it was like, you were literally in a relationship when you took those photos that was in St. Louis. When you snuck her there for the holidays, we were so happy then how like he's trying to make it like, it's like some Titanic romance story. And by the way, if this was Titanic, you know, he would have been kicking. He would have, he would have fucking kicked. He would have, he would have kicked Raquel right out of that door at the end. You know, Kate Winslet's on that door at the end. He would have been like, sorry, Rachel, you're turning the water. Peace out. Like it would have been over, but he's like acting like it's this big romance. And now we should feel bad for him because Raquel broke his heart. Raquel yes. broke his heart. You guys. Ariana She's in a mental have. health facility. Yes, Ariana can have a couple episodes. She's bitter. She's petty. She won't get over it. Uh, she's, you know, it, but yet we're supposed to feel sorry for him that his mistress has set some boundaries and gotten some therapy and been like, I don't think this is love. I think you might be love bombing me. And I think you might have been kind of grooming me a little bit. And he's like, we were so in love. When in her Jetta in the backseat, when you were banging, when Ariana lost her grandma the and the dog. I know that's the thing. Every, everywhere you look, it's misery. And the fact that he has the, the, I mean, that's what I just have to, at the end of the day, like I have to tell myself he is just flat out stupid because yeah. if this is completely planned and thought out, it's so much even darker that like, if he thinks this narrative would potentially work. And I guess in some ways it's working for some people, but I just have to remind people like he complains about Rachel, not taking his calls. She only gets her phone for a couple brief moments in a mental health facility that she went in because of something that you started with her. And she's the selfish one. Like that's the part I don't get of like, dude, it was my birthday, dude. <laughs> she's my birthday. I'm out free walking around and she's in a facility and doesn't get to call me. That's selfish. And Billy Lee, fuck Billy. Oh Lee. My I'm God. sorry. Billy Lee. What is going Ugh. Billy Lee just looking at him like he's this Greek god coming out of a cold bath? What are your takes on Billy Lee? Well, like, I have so many feelings on Billy Lee because I want to support Billy Lee because I support women in comedy and I love that she's on this stand up journey. At first, I thought this was just a way. It's really hard to be a stand up comic in LA and it's oversaturated. And I thought this was a way for her to promote her shows because you would see her in scenes and she would be like, Yeah, I think that happened at my comedy sh store show <laughs> on March 5th, which I'll be back on April 7th at 7 p.m. If you want to come, tickets are $25. <laughs> Uh, you know, so I really thought that that's yeah. what she was doing. But now it's just like, Billy, I, I've watched a little bit of her podcast, which she does with an, another stand up comedian who's super funny. And I, I see that Billy is, it's, she, she gets what the game is, but she's willing, I think, to play the game in order to get, I guess, not having to take care of people's dogs or dog sit or get a little bit of notoriety. I'm not sure, but I hate what she's doing. I hate that she's there and just simply existing as like a yes man for Sandoval, you know, just like, this well, I understand yes playing the game. Like, no girl. I understand playing the game, but it seems like she's like lost in the sauce. Like, I mean, it seems like she genuinely dislikes Ariana, the face she made at that creepy pool party when he's like, Sorry, my roommate's here, so I can't have an orgy in the living room. And Billy Lee's like, oh, my God, that sucks. Oh, she's horrible. And then literally, like, I'm sorry to use it, like, whores her friend out. Like, hey, Tom, do you like my friend? Yes. Do you like my friend sitting right behind yeah. you? Do you like I think we're going to see her in tonight's episode. Oh, and she doesn't give anything to the actual show. It would be great if she, we got, like, a woman's perspective from a close female friend of Tom's being her. And yet she's just doing the opposite. She's just Schwartz is giving more than she Schwartz is. is even like, uh, this isn't a good scene, man. I got to get out of here. Yes. Um, you know, and I Tom's showing to off his like fruit loop necklace. And he has like the fruit loop necklace <laughs> around his ankle now too. Off because those necklaces are actually really cute. And there's like a, I think a girl in LA that makes them this woman in LA. And oh, I thought so it was adorable. Kyle Chan. 
oh no, I wouldn't support anything. No, it's a it's a woman who makes those necklaces. I forgot oh. her name. Shout out to her because Kyle Chan can ooh, get out of here, Kyle Chan. But um, this woman makes them and they're actually really adorable. But he found a way to ruin them. You know, <laughs> just like white nail polish, he ruins everything he touches. And oh, hey, hey Jolene, ombre, ombre. <laughs> oh, sorry, ombre. Ombre, it's ombre. Ah, that was like Jack. Jacks comes in. He's like, you got to get rid of that white nail polish, dude. And he's like, ombre, dude. That was like the most mad stuff. Yes. He's like, oh, and Tom getting mad when he's like hey man i saw you on instagram you look 50 years old that, that was, was like the worst thing tom has heard entire the entirety of scandal was jack's that's calling why. him 50 years old that's why ryan every since scandal started i've i've done this little ongoing joke where i just up his age throughout all my <laughs> lives in my videos where he ends up being like 200 by the end because i know that's the only thing that will get to this dude and that helps me sleep at night <laughs> Because that's all he cares about. He doesn't. If you're like Tom, you're a bad person. He's like, oh, it's like Tom. Yeah. Those glitter pants are ugly. What the? Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> no, I love that Tom is now like every real thing that he's done. If any of us comment on it, he's now put that under. They're haters, dude. Haters are gonna hate. Some of your haters are your biggest fans. It's like, no, you actually did no. do something wrong. Like you just won't, you won't relent. And that's the thing is that no shout out to Rachel, but I will say. I did love that she went to a mental health facility. I did love that she wanted to look deeper about her own patterns in romance and her own patterns with how her mind works. And Tom refuses to do any of that. He's like, sorry, dude, my band is my therapy. Like, and it's, it's, it's so bizarre to me is that it's like right there. And we're talking about men being scared of therapy. If you remember Jax, who also has his own relationship issues. Do you remember the season when Randall agreed, like said he would pay for Jax's therapy? And then at the reunion, Lala said, yeah, Randall agreed to pay and Jax just didn't go. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Remember, he just did the Reiki. He had the, the Reiki woman. Yeah, the Reiki healer. And he also <laughs> said on the last season he was in, he was like, I'm sorry, Oriana. My brain is bruised. I have a bruised brain. You don't understand. Like, I just like he was trying to like, you, you know, appeal to like her mental health, you know, like her actually taking her mental health, you know, seriously. Yes. It's just one big joke. I just don't know. I don't know where we go from here uh because tonight we you know we're on episode nine and i think it's going to be a 14 episode season mm -hmm. they filmed the reunion and you know andy he says this about anything that he ever watches on bravo he's like oh my god the second half of the season it is just i mean you're talking citizen kane this thing just hits out of nowhere <laughs> it, totally it is some does. of the best stuff i've ever seen in my life i'm literally <laughs> this reinvents the wheel and i watched episode eight and i was like wait when does the good stuff start because like I'll have to watch it three times before I find it funny, you know, you. because the first time it's like really dark for me. And, and I then I stop. find and yes. I pause. And my husband goes, he has this saying because um, we have this little saying where we do this with big brother. Cause every season I, I cover the whole big brother season. Okay. Dude, that's and such a it's, beast. It's How do you do that. that? So Vanderpump is nothing compared to that because sometimes it just is like, Oh, I'm going crazy. And one time I was just out of my mind and I was like, he's like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, they say the dumb things and I make the money. Like that is, that's what my <laughs> husband will say. He goes, no, Julie, remember they say the dumb things and you make the money. And that's like, that's my job now. That is my job. That's what they I always, dumb things. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll always go in and I'll be like, time to make the donuts. You yeah, know, it's like time, time to, to make, make the, the donut. donut time to, and I, it's literally like dead man walking. When I walk into this mm -hmm. room after a Vanderpot, like the next, um, I'll just like, and I'll do everything in my power to put it off and put it off because every time I start thinking about it or taking a note or something, I'll really, and I know that's psychotic of me. Like, I know that's not like healthy of me, but I genuinely get into it in that sense where I get enraged sometimes. I mean, the other yeah. thing I was like, did you laugh as hard as I did a couple episodes ago when Lisa and Tom sat down? And Lisa was like, I talked to Raquel and, and it seems like she thinks you're not good for her. And Tom literally was like, wait, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, he literally seemed like, he's like, what? I'm not good for her? Like, he seemed like he couldn't comprehend he where that thought would be coming from. Like, who got to her that said I'm not good for her? Because I <laughs> am. Like, he, and he was like sitting there eating like a pint of ice cream, like half, like on right. a summer's day at like Tom Tom. And I thought it was one of the funniest scenes. Like, I cracked up for like, like, I think a solid five minutes because I just, that was like how deep it is in his brain that he has done He's nothing so wrong. 
unself-aware. Like you, I've never seen someone with such a lack of self-awareness and he's just straight Delulu, you know? I mean, yeah, Lisa's just like, oh yes, he, she's blocked you, Tom. She says she doesn't want to be with you. Yes, we talked at length. I feel like she's trolling him to his face also <laughs> like, you want to yell at me? Well, I talked to your mistress and she hates you. And she says your penis is tiny, Tom, and your balls go up in your body Tom, when you she, get scared. She sent me, she sent me nudes, Tom. She sent me nudes. And she, she, she said, loves we're... Ken. She's always she thought about Ken's penis when she was with your penis, Tom. You know, did you, just... did you know? Did you know Raquel was in my jacuzzi with me last night? I can't believe that. Oh, you do a good Ken. Well, it's just like stumbling in, and I, I I have a theory that we don't see Ken this season because Ken actually agrees with Ariana. Like yeah. Lisa, actually, think is. Ariana's That's completely actually... in the right, and I don't like Tom. <laughs> well, you can't be on the show then. You're ruining the bit, Ken. Ken, no, you can't do that. And then I can totally see that because I heard that Ken secretly underneath his clothes, he wears a Team Ariana shirt, Team Ariana <laughs> undies. He prays to an Ariana altar at yes. night. All the dogs, the new dogs, they're all Ariana one, Ariana two, Ariana three. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, I've seen, crazy. I've seen, I've seen Chicago on Broadway eighteen times now with Ariana. He actually I've lives in New York, Ryan. Yeah, I've moved <laughs> here. Uh, she extended her run, and uh, I'll be in New York a little bit longer. I love it. I love Broadway. Yay! Um, it so is so good at Ken. I need to. Well, like, it's just, it's not even that. It's just, it's Ken. literally just the tiniest whisper of a mumble and whatever the microphone Ozzy picks up. Exactly. Exactly. It exactly. That's it. Yes. Yes. Um, I have to ask you a question. I'm sorry. I know this is your no, show. No, please. But no. I have to get your thoughts on Rachel's last podcast episode. Did you listen to it? And name them. Name them. We're going to name them. Name them. Well, okay. So, Liz. It, I really appreciate what Rachel is doing or or attempting to do and trying to take back the narrative. For me, it gets a little confusing when you try to monetize narratives. And of course, that's like the basis of reality TV. And I think we would all agree that I would have loved to have seen Rachel's narrative on season 11. But we all we are also trying to do a lawsuit. We are part, part of Reality Reckoning with Bethany Frankel. I believe she's being used once again by somebody Not more powerful Frankel. than her. I call her the Frankel. <laughs> Frankel later. It. And, uh, you know, so I feel like she's being used again, but like, I'm all for hearing her side of things. I feel, unfortunately, even no matter how successful the podcast is, it's never going to reach the amount of people that that show would, even though, you know, she wouldn't be in control of the edit. So we're getting everything, but I feel the further we get into her story, the less personal responsibility she's taking. Um, yes. because at the end of the day, even if grooming is involved, even if all of these things, you know, and I'm trying to listen and, and if I don't listen, I'll read the recaps, uh, you know, is that at the end of the day, it feels like she's getting more away from her personal responsibility in this, because at the, uh, no matter what Tom did, you still participated in something where you were directly lying to her and others faces. Also in the lawsuit that she alleges that the production knew she is going to have to prove that. She is going to have to prove those things. And she did like put down who knew. And it was Logan, Ariana's best friend. She thinks Max Boyens knew. It was a lot of, I think, or this person walked in on. And this is where it's a little weird for me to talk about because I've hung out with all of those guys in the past. Like I knew Logan before I knew Ariana and Tom. Like I, and Logan has always been one of the most stand up guy. Like this is why I like Ariana and Logan too, is like Logan and Ariana have both told me things about my life that like, Hey man, you could be better on this or you failed on this or not, not in a mean way, like, but like in a nice mm -hmm. way. Um, and I've left them alone throughout Scandaval. Like I'm not one of those people that will text Ariana or try to get information. Like we'll interact here or there or like, Oh my God, this is amazing about Broadway. But I leave it alone because I don't want to have anything kind of cloud things, but like yeah. Logan and all those people like, yeah, like they like, weird parties and stuff you walk in like i went to coachella with all those people they all fucking get into these cuddle puddles like you know like it's like i was there like it 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 did not seem i could see in a place if you were fucked up that you would not necessarily like tom was like hugging at me like i i don't know like i'm not trying to make excuses for logan and stuff but I can say that I know he did not think that's what he was seeing at the time. He now knows he was wrong. What did you think about all of it more importantly? Because my you, thing is, you know, if you, you've ever been in a situation like that, what she said, you know, Logan walked into the social media room, which is his I favorite. <laughs> I did a video where I was like, Ryan, I have been down like deep dives this past year of like Sheena. You can find so much gold in Sheena's vlogs. Shout out to Sheena. Oh my that's God. One thing. 
I know Sheena is effing up this season, but I just, I like, the, she's so unapologetically about, Sheena that I love Sheena. Know, like she's so she's, unapologetically, Sheena. I know she's never changed how she is. Like she's always been about, she's why is always. it not about me? And it's, yes. by the way, Sheena being why not about me, it comes from a, I know this sounds ridiculous. It comes from a really pure place of wanting people to love her. Like, I know that sounds wild she to say, but it does. Acceptance, you know, so it yes. does make sense. I still am frustrated with Sheena, but, but like you said, this is kind of why when I cover this stuff, I don't, people always ask why I don't do more interviews or why I don't go to like the parties. Like they always have these big brother parties and my friends who cover it will be at these parties. And I go, just give me the tea because when I meet them, I, I can't give my true feelings yeah. that I feel like because like I've met Sheena. Sheena was one of the kindest people to me. Um, and we've DM'd and you know, so but I can I still call out her behavior, but um I, I, yeah. it's a lot harder when you when you know them as people. Know, like Yeah. That's exactly. And that's why also like, you know, I was invited to that Vanderpump premiere and luckily I was sick uh, when it premiered this season. But also part of me, like leading even up to that, I was really scared to go because I just honestly didn't be want to be around Tom Sandoval because I know like when you talk to somebody face to face, like unless you are, you're not going to be like, fuck you, dude, you fucking like, you, you know, I'm in misery covering you every week. Like, you, you know, it's like a weird situation <laughs> I that would. I don't. I, could you imagine like a <laughs> like, crazed fan it's on TMZ. Right. Um, no, I don't know. It, it does get weird when you know them a little bit, but also I think that's why I took it so hard with Sandoval to begin with because, yeah. and I know once again, you this were makes at their insane. house. Well, that's what it makes you me insane were. is that I'm one of the only people even at the, I looked up to Tom Sandoval. I know I get roasted for saying this because I thought, Here's a dude that does something weird like I do. He's trying to do a karaoke band. You know, everybody kind of makes fun of him for his fashion, but then they grew to kind of love him. And I thought this dude, he loves Ariana. She lets him do his weird thing. She supports him. It like, seems great. You know, yeah. Like to me, I was like, this dude has like a weird path in life and I have a weird path in life. And then I was like, oh, he's just Jax. He's just. Yep. Like he's just like everybody else. And like, I Hiding know my behind own. a good edit. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I, like, I know my own failures and I just thought he was better. Like, that's why I was like, I, you know, I looked to him. I was like, this is how I should be more like, and I know that sounds insane. So I took it. Like, I was just like, I didn't believe it. Like, I just didn't believe it at all when it first happened. Like it was. And then, I mean, I found out immediately, but it still really shocked me because the more you got into it, it was, and you make a point on your show is that, this dude is like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready to date again. This guy has never stopped dating. This never. guy was dating while Rachel was in the mental health facility. Mm -hmm. I, I, dating is a strong word. I mean, like putting his thing in other people's things, yeah, you know, right. doing the mm -hmm. hippity dippity. Like he's never truly. And it just makes you then think like, oh, that sucks. It's just like another way that I think he's setting himself up for disaster down the line. And also after that New York Times article, it's like this dude's talking about living every part of his life three times. Like he's like filming a reality. Like maybe it's time to like take a break for a year and actually start to live life one time and then yeah. see how that goes and then come back to reality. He's just, he's literally in full midlife crisis. He's already, I think, a crappy person, but he's in full midlife crisis like we all are. I mean, as a woman in my 40s, I am too. But you know what I do? I turn down the lights and I listen to, you know, Gavin Rosdale sing Glycerine live at, you know, MTV Springfield <laughs> while it's raining. And I light a couple I know candles. exactly that performance. <laughs> yeah. I, I can picture I, it with the rain on the guitar. Yeah, oh, I with, the, <laughs> with the leopard guitar strap, I'm just like, I can't. Oh, mine will be, uh, like, mine will be counting crows on SNL singing round here <gasps> round here like that oh my god that. ryan i ruined my parents family vacation to yellowstone national park and glacier national park because it was the year that august and everything after came out and i had my discman and i we also i think had like an attachment for the minivan we took a road <laughs> trip out there and my we have videos and my parents are still like you still like that band that sings the round here because i played it over <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't understand. This music is oh heavy. man i'll i'll have moments of being depressed where i'll listen to anna begins like 30 <gasps> times in a row when and i'll just be like, like yeah yeah uh, <laughs> watches me away yeah, yeah. And anna begins to I, that's why i pray that tom never covers a counting crow song i used to want that but i don't want his band to ever do a counting crow song um so much ryan but i will say about that logan thing i don't think logan was in on it i think most likely what happens when you're in a situation like that i dated a very sandoval-esque guy much of my 20s unfortunately so a lot of it you know he didn't realize it triggers a lot of people too um and in his reaction was very similar to tom sandoval's uh there 
there were people who came to me and were like, something's weird with him. And, and I'd be like, no, yeah. no, no, no. We yeah. have a very interesting relationship because they make you believe that you're crazy if you question them. So I think Logan probably, you know, saw stuff and was like, Ariana, this is a little, and she probably will admit herself. She was like, nah, it's fine. It's fine. We're all cool. And yes. She, Said they do cuddle puddles. So I think naming Logan and Brad, especially where Brad and Logan have been what appears to be fantastic freaking friends to Ariana. So I don't think it ruffled that relationship. But I think the problem with Rachel Raquel is despite doing all this stuff, she still wants to hurt Ariana. And you can tell this through the law. So you can tell yes. this through the little comments because in Jolene, that what do you think that's about? Well, it's jealousy. She wanted to be Ariana. She wanted Ariana's boyfriend. She, remember, she also often offered up a thruple, according to her. And Tom said, no, yeah, I didn't want to go. Sister wives. So Seeking it's very, wife. yes. Oh my God. What a season that would have been. Dude, so it, well, talk about oh, darkness. If you, I mean, so I watched that last dark. night every week. I'm like, if I ever run for office, I will make it illegal for this show to exist because it feels like it's illegal. It feels like I'm, it feels like I am doing something wrong when I watch that show because you're like, how is this real life? This is insane. <laughs> I know. So I think that there's a lot of Rachel Raquel that is, you know, has this jealousy over Ariana. I mean, even when the affair was going on and she knew it, the conversations she had with her were diabolical. They were demon level. Well, I think in your relationship, you should want to have sex like Lala have sex with my boyfriend jams. So uh, it's, it's really demented. And also the fact that in this podcast episode where she was naming names, interesting, she didn't name Joe Wenberg, the hairstylist. Boom! Who, who did double dating with them all over dating. town. They mm -hmm. went on a ski yeah. trip. They were at Kyle he, Chan's jewelry launch event yes. before they filmed the finale last season. They Thank did a you. double date. Joe knows where the bodies are buried, and I'm glad you brought mm -hmm. up Joe because what the Joe's fuck? Joe's digging it. Joe's digging it. Do your Joe. Do the, your Joe for the, everybody. Well, Do the I Joe. I had my hat, but Joe's just always, she's just like, oh my God. <laughs> this chair is like so weird. Like, it's like, oh my God, this oh, Ellie's so beautiful. <laughs> this, this you can try to sit on an actual chair. It's just like, oh. <laughs> and Tom, we're not like, Go Packers. We're not like regular, <laughs> regular girl. I'm just like a really cool girl. No, I'm, just like, you, I'm, I'm like a quirky girl. girl. I'm quirky. I'm like on the, I like you, you like, said that you're like, I'm on a rom-com. Like, it's like, I don't know. Um, Tom, let's just wait for like, I don't know. Like, I'll wait for you. Like how many years? Like seven? Seven? Wait, this is my, I always do the three stooges. <laughs> whoop, whoop, blah, blah. She's like a constant reminder of pull my finger. Hey, pull my finger. Uh, 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 uh. A clearly made up story that she walked a turtle on a leash and it fell. Ma'am, please stop. I'm glad you brought please, this up. Please stop. She needs because to Because if stop. that story is true, she's a murderer. Like there's no part of that story where she was like, I desperately tried to get into the grate. There's a live turtle down there. She's like, <laughs> the turtle, it was gone. It was gone. I had it. And also if you had that turtle on a leash, How you would be able you? to have the yeah. leash and you would be able to pull the turtle up with the leash. How did they get off the leash? There's so many details that are left. She's just, she's she's this classic case you see as you go through girlhood to womanhood. You see, you know, these girls that just are like, I'm not like a regular girl. I'm like a cool girl. I seriously like, oh my God, I love football. One in 10, first in <laughs> one, whatever, go. And there are women who like football who aren't like that. But then you see these ones where she's like, I don't even like wash my hair. Have you, I just, I don't believe like LA beauty standards. And you're like, <laughs> But you live in LA and you work in beauty. Like, stop. And the fact that she, Ryan, does it not baffle you that she was, see, Kristen Doty said they hung out four times a week. And Dude, then that's why I tell people you've got to watch the Vanderpump Rules after show on Peacock because so much more information gets out there and you actually realize the story of Joe is not as innocent as Joe wants you to believe. Like, oh, Joe no. literally texted Katie right after the breakup of Schwartz and is like, Bieber loves you, which because Katie has a fixation with Justin Bieber. And so she's like, Bieber loves you and da 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 da. And then a immediately within the next month like moves in with schwartz when katie had a whole apartment that she could have stayed with because she was katie's friend they saw each other four times a week or, or so kristen's joe, friend yeah oh, sorry kristen's friend. sorry yep. but joe like there was also and a lot of these people the periphery characters of vanderpump rules that's where like you think the main cast is dark get into some of these periphery characters that, that one want guy that was at his party and he was also in the pool in mexico i forget his name but i think he brett was, brett yeah he was like like besties with rachel and he was with i do you well, want to know his something? best friend too for a moment? When I did Zach Peters, I think the last show or the show before uh, his live show in LA, I was doing stand up and I did jokes about Rachel Raquel and my friends were sitting at the same table as him. And they said, he, he said, I don't like these jokes. 
<laughs> like, I'm sorry, Brett. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Brett, yeah, Brett's like I I've known Brett for a long time, and he's like a, a nice kid, loves Taylor Swift, but at the same time, it feels like there's a, a group, a vortex of people around them, all of them, that like say they don't want to be on the show, but then they want to be on the show. Like they don't want to be, no, 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 I don't want to be. I just love being like, but they want to be in that ecosystem. And that's one of the things you got to watch for. Like these, you know, the periphery characters, the hanger ons, but Joe has managed to get in there. And I love on her uh, talking head. She's like, can I sit cross-legged? Can I just buck the trend? Can I sit cross? I'm just, I'm unique that way. I don't buy, I don't buy it. And her like social media of like, I love all the positivity. Like, we, we have to agree with the society. If you do something wrong, it's okay. You don't have to hate the person for the end of the time, but you have to realize they don't just get a free pass. You got to realize why Katie wouldn't like Joe. Like yes. it's obvious why Katie wouldn't like Joe for that to even be in question of Schwartz and like, and Santa was like, yeah, dude, Katie's just miserable. She's like, dislike the last two people you hooked up with Raquel and uh, Joe. That's crazy, dude. And it's like, <laughs> no, that's not crazy. That's very not. sane for Katie to disagree. And about normal. That. And can I just say justice for Katie? Because she's getting, um, she's getting pegged as someone who started this crackhead uh, thing about um, crackhead Joe. Joe. However, I did research because I was like, nobody is going to, you know, come at Katie and Ariana without receipts. And if you go back on Joe's Instagram, I'm not stalking, I'm researching. And you will see that back in 2019, she posted, she was posting posts where she was making this crackhead joke about herself. So I think this is something internalized oh. in her. And I took the screenshot and I've shown it on my channel. Like this is proof that Katie didn't start that. This oh. is probably something, you know how people have that joke about themselves. I do things, uh, with, I have ADHD. So I, it's like, I do relate to Joe in weird ways like that, but sure. I'm also medicated and things. And I'm not trying to get all the problematic boys to like me, but I, um, I think it was like probably a joke she was saying herself, you know, like, oh, I got crackhead yeah. energy. And then Katie just repeated it. But there was a post from 2019. So if she can show us where prior to 2019, Katie Maloney actually said that, I still think Joe started it about herself. This is how. That's no, I, I true. But also Joe trying to like make us feel bad of like my mom called and asked if I was a crackhead, <laughs> you know? And it's like, ah, oh. and Allie's sitting there going, I'm just here to read your chart. Oh, like it's weird. But like also like, you know, uh, Katie called her spooky. Like should her mom call and like, are you spooky? And also I, I'm sure her parents know that Joe is unique. I think Joe is eight episodes away from starting her own podcast. It'll be called. <laughs> oh Joe. my god! It'll be called Joe. My gosh! It'll be about her adventures in LA, and it'll start off, guys. This is so much more than just Vanderpump Rules. It's going to be so different about like my take on life, and then it's going to be a straight up recap of Vanderpump Rules after the second episode. It's going to be like. Just, have you met wow. Joe? I've never met Joe. No. No, I've never had, uh, you know, I, I know people that have met Joe. I know, um, but I just feel like once they get into this, as much as they're even getting hated on, they do love the attention. They love it. There's something in it that they just seem to like, it must, it must be so amazing to get any kind of spotlight that it seems like they run towards it instead of away from it. And I would just imagine at this point, the Vanderpump rules, I always look at it as people that are like chained to the show. They should escape. Like everybody's telling them to escape, but they can't. So it's this show about all of these people that shouldn't be friends with each other, but are called friends. Like Schwartz is like, we got to get the gang back together. Do you mean the gang that all lie and cheat and steal on each other? Like you, what? that's not a gang. That's not, that's literally not the definition of friends. And yet week after week, we show up acting like these are lifelong friends when nobody should be friends with the barbacks they worked with in their 20s. Right? Because we've all been there and then we've all moved yes. on and we wonder like, what happened to that person? That's where there's Instagram and Facebook and things like that. So you can go, oh, they have a family now. They live in Iowa. That's so great. That's so awesome. Yeah, Sandoval no. should literally <laughs> just have seen Rachel when he was like perusing high school yearbook photos. That's the only reason he would have ever been able to like see Rachel. Like in like, he shouldn't have met Rachel in real life. Okay, so uh, I know, we're, God, this goes so fast because I just love talking to you. DJ James Kennedy, what's your take on him this season? Because they really seemed like he had the hero edit towards the end of last season mm -hmm. into the reunion, this relationship with Allie. And what is your take on Allie? Because I think she's like such a voice of reason yet. I can't, the thing that confuses me the most, I think everybody is, well, then how is she with DJ James Kennedy? Because he's been highly problematic. And I'm not saying that people and men can't fix things and get over things and all of that stuff, but it's very interesting to me. And I don't know if we really see their real relationship or he is mm -hmm. just 
a rehabbed man. Well, I love Allie. I think Allie's great. I think she's a really refreshing addition. I understand your question of, you know, she seems so much more evolved in things and smart in this relationship with James. I, I also am like, huh? But I also remember that, you know, I, it, it's always the, the women, um, especially the young women, like that you least expect that are going to date some of these problematic guys. Cause I was one of yeah. those people too. People were like, you're too smart. How did you fall for that? Well, I think it's, it goes back to like very basic of when you're a little girl, you're told if the boy hits you, he likes you. And the boy that's nice to you, you're like, get away. So right away we're conditioned to be like, Oh, so if a guy is mean to us or shows us negative attention, um, then that means he likes us. So, and it's almost like we're taught to, we have to be captain save a bro ho, you know, we have to fix boys because I can we fix him, like, yeah. well, girls, you know, they, um, mature faster and you have to, it's like, no, tell the little boys to catch the fuck up. You know, why do we have to slow down for them? So I think it's, it's, I'm not saying that, you know, I know there's lots of allegations out there about James and I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. There's so much to process. And, and by the way, that. those are, that's Kristen's story to tell when she wants yep. to tell it. Those are like the, you know, when they want to tell that that's when that mm -hmm. should happen. But yeah, I think we've all heard rumors out there. Yeah. And I think, you know, again, if you look at Tom Sandoval, you can easily ask too, like, how did Ariana last that long with him? The dude uses like as a comma and he's like, <laughs> oh, and he loves yelling at women. But I do think most women you'll talk to sometime in their life, they've dated a baby man like that, or they're currently with a baby man like that, because we tell young girls, you know, to kind of pick up the pieces of the man and almost be their mother. And uh, that, you know, boys are just, they're just slower. They're just so slow and you're so fast. And it's like, well, get them to, to keep up, you know? And if a little boy, I always tell my niece, if a little boy hits you, he's an asshole. Okay. And if um, that doesn't mean he likes you, if a person likes you, he'll treat you nicely. And it goes to those like base Six. So when, when society is always like, oh, women only want, you know, bad boys, it's like, cause you told us that since we were in kindergarten, <laughs> bad boys love us. What are we supposed to believe? So well, I, I, I have such a, a layered opinion on this and I, I really do like Allie. I think she's great. I see that she's coming out with music. I hope Sheena stays friends with her. Despite that it's, <laughs> just so I much. wanted to have another song. I, okay, well, maybe she'll do a screamo version of Allie's song and, and everybody will be happy, but also with, with, uh, Allie, it's just one of those interesting things because we found out through the course of this season that there was a time where she left him for the weekend because it was too much. And that is something I think we need to zoom in on. And I, I hope at some point she has a scene where somebody honestly talks to her about her relationship with DJ James Kennedy because we see them together. We don't, we haven't really had that scene where they have talked to Allie about her relationship. And so those little pieces of information that get sprinkled out there, like I never heard about that. That wasn't on TMZ. That wasn't yeah. a rumor I had heard. So I was like, wow, like you don't know, like an and all relationships have their ups and downs, obviously, but that was like mm -hmm. new information where I was like, and also good on Allie. If she can't, like, I love that she did leave if something got too yeah. intense. That, but don't you me. think the show itself and production and stuff, are, they're probably so desperate for any of the guys to be a hero. They're just like, James, please dust him off. He's fine. Look at, he's grown. We need a number one guy. They're all trash. I mean, cause even like Brock this season is saying stuff. I'm like, Brock, what is wrong with you? Sheena's mom seems great. She's going to take care of your Wait, what's kid. your, what's your Brock? What does your Brock sound like? Uh, oh, Brock is like, nee. Nee, Brock is like, yeah, I did a threesome. You did what four <laughs> with two guys, but they wait, but there was two girls, so there was two dicks, and then one <laughs> uh, two vaginas. So we can't even. I was confused <laughs> by what nee, I was. I was confused by what was going on. Sheena, we gotta get out. We gotta. Your mom's here at the time. She's just like <laughs> that blonde oh, yeah. hair. <laughs> I can't do it at all. So I do them as a little leprechaun, I'll be like, I am Brock. What's going on, Sheena? How are you doing? Oh, We've got to find a nanny. Like it's really, <laughs> uh, but I love that. He's like, tries to mansplain everything as well. And Brock oh, obviously has his own issues, which are well known out there, but it's fo so funny when everybody's like, you're, you're supposed to be the voice of reason this episode, or you're supposed to be the voice of reason or Lala, you're supposed to be the voice of reason. And you can't be the voice of reason and then say something batshit insane. I think Lala gets off so much. She gets by on so much is that she's able to affect, 
effectively communicate. She speaks clearly her range. And this is the other thing why I think Katie gets hate. I was talking about this last week is that Katie's register is lower and the way she speaks is a little slower and it's a lower register and Lala's up here and forceful. And I enunciate everything I say. She's got and, the finger guns. Yeah, exactly. And, and weirdly enough, that works with people. So Katie, I think spits so much truth. I mean, spits so much truth. I think Katie is so darkly funny that people don't even give her credit for how funny she is, but Justice people will Katie. be drawn. Well, people will be drawn towards Lala because it's like anything. It's more presentable on television. And I think well, that's a weird love thing to say. Katie's miserable. Why can't she be miserable? Even if she is like that, allow women to be miserable. I had someone in my comments say, Katie is uh, our generation's Daria. And I fucking love it. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> you know? she's clever. She's smart. She's witty. And she's, if she doesn't want to smile, she's not going to smile. Cause I think that's the struggle that Lala has. And she goes back and forth with when she goes too hard, you will see her come out and go, Oh, I have guilt. Like from the reunion. And it's like, why just live in that moment? You were mad. Yeah. You were projecting some Randall stuff on Sandoval, but you know, you had to get it out. That's okay. But now she wants to go completely 180 and go, now I want to be soft because she just doesn't, Lala doesn't know who she is yet. Katie does. Uh, but Lala, La no, I it. love that. Oh, I love it. Lala doesn't know who she is, but she's acting like she does. Like yes. she's act, she's, she's saying everything with the force of somebody that knows themselves inwards and outwards. But then yep. at the same sentence, she'll be like, I'm still discovering the soft side of me and stuff like that. But she's speaking like she's a fully functioning form. Katie is like, no, that's, I know that's one of my toxic that's traits. Amazing. I know that about myself. So Katie's actually far more self-aware and knows who she is. Lala, I like you're saying, that. she one of those people who's like, no, I know who I am. So the more people, the more it's like anyone that, you know, protests too much. Anyone who says, you know, I'm in such a loving relationship. I have the best sex. Like, it's so great. It's like, no, you don't. And you're on the verge of a divorce because people that are okay with who they are, they don't have to keep saying that stuff. They don't have to overcompensate. And that's the vibe I get from Lala. And just as like a fellow sober gal, I understand her journey. I get that She's trying to, na it's so difficult to navigate in the world once you take the substances away that you use to medicate, that you used, you know, to kind of hide behind that there's, it's just, it's so difficult. So for that, I have ultimate empathy for Lala, but I still want her to just sit down and say, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just fucking yeah. And, and also saying like, and I want to make this my career. Like I want to be a part of this industry because I think Lala has such a good shot of having a career after Vanderpump rules. And I think that's that thing that she'll then go on these press tours and say some really batshit things that I don't think are deserved, but I think it's part of that attention economy. That's like, you know, Heather McDonald will do that or like Jeff Lewis or all of these, you know, you'll say something really like controversial because it does get people talking, but at the same time, sometimes it doesn't have like, it doesn't make a lot of sense. There's not a lot of foundation there. I know I took up so much of your time. Do you have 10 more minutes? Oh, yes. I'm not in okay. a hurry. I'm having so okay. much fun with you. Okay. Okay. As long as you're having a good time. I, I am too. I just, I realized we're at an hour and I'm like, oh no, shit. My dogs well, okay. are actually napping nicely. So this is good. <laughs> I'm shocked that I did not scare them with my voice. Um, The Valley, or you probably have headphones in. The yeah. Valley. So we had the connector scene with the Valley, which was Jack's telling us how he has everything figured out in his life. He's got the wife. He's a kid. He's got a saloon. He's got the cameos. Everything is working. He finally admits after lying for many years that he was fired from Vanderbump rules because back in the day he said, Hey, I chose to go, dude. I got a lot of opportunities. And then in this, he says, listen, yeah, you know, my ego got out of check. I did a lot of bad things and you know, I, I regret it now. And, and like, he actually admits this in the connector scene of going into the Uber over to the Valley. But what's so funny about the Valley is that there's just as much darkness in the Valley, if not more, because you realize his relationship is falling apart. What do you think about the press tour? Not even the Valley itself, but the press tour that Brittany and Jax are on together where they're openly talking about like, yeah, he just got to grow up. I don't want to be with him right now. He's got to go do uh, therapy. He don't want to do therapy. So he just jacks. Like, what do you, it's, it's so bizarre. Like, I feel like we're being like conditioned to believe this is how relationships should be. It's horrible. I mean, I, I think that they saw what worked for Scandival. So they were like, we need something out the gate that is really going to be Scandival esque. That's my first thought on it. And Brittany out there being like, I'm at the Chateau Marmont with my friend, you know, my bear trays. I, I'm not a Britney fan. I don't buy this little act she tries to put out there. I haven't since the beginning. And her and Jax, I just think the two of them obviously have 
issues and problems. Um, I don't know how they're going to carry this show. So I'm hoping Kristen and the the other people that Luke we're meeting and um, Janet and Jason and I like uh, Janet and Jason. Yeah. I they like seem them. to be the reliable narrators and Janet seems to have a healthy, uh, joking they're relationship with Jess. Esque, I feel like her energy oh, is that's, like yeah. early Stassi where she's like, yeah, I took the uh, main bedroom from my parents. Yeah. I'm pretty much like a devil child. So I, <laughs> I get that kind of self-awareness from her, but I, I don't love the fact that they knew they were going to put Jax forth as like this changed man and he's a family man. And then immediately pre-season, it's like, I'm living in an Airbnb. And you're like, what? Huh? Who would have ever thought yeah, I mean, that's the other thing too. And I, I almost, I was talking to the audience yesterday of saying like, cause if you watch that Vanderpump after show, there's like a scene where Jax is talking to Sandoval and he's like, Hey dude, is your name on that lease? Is your name on the ownership of the house? Then Ariana's got to go. That's just legal, man. So I wonder if like Jax did that with Brittany of like, my name's on the house here. So you got to pick up and go because I was like, why isn't Brittany staying at the house? Like, why is Brittany having to get an Airbnb? I don't understand any of this. And that's why it, like, you're right. Rings he false. Did that. He did that to her. I guarantee. Cause that's the type of thing he would do. When I saw him on the after show, say that to Sandoval. I was like, yep, same old Jax. And then when I see Brittany, Brittany does these things where she like low key kind of drags the other women they're all like but Britney's so sweet and Britney's like oh Lala didn't didn't Ariana not also tell her business partner Katie about Chicago yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know like Britney yeah. you got bigger problems girl so she's throwing Ariana under the bus I'm like that is none of your business did she do that yeah but she does it with a twang and so <laughs> it's supposed to be like oh shucks I don't know what I'm saying here oh my god Dude, them are crazy. Like the toxic twins they're just I find them both to be villains, I guess. So um, I'm not super invested in their relationship. Uh, more so I'm excited about like maybe the Janets or Kristen's journey with Luke, uh, that Jesse guy, ew, who seems to be worse than well, Jesse and Michelle Lally also like they announced their separation or divorce right as like the, right, the week before the premiere. And if you watch the first episode, you can see where it's headed. You can see the cracks immediately. Mm -hmm. And this guy does almost seem like more cocky than Jax. And then you have Luke is kind of like this outdoors woodsman that doesn't know what he's gotten himself into, which is kind of funny. Like I want to see the show through his eyes more this season because I can't imagine Imagine him like going to a wedding, meeting Kristen Doty, not really ever watching reality television, end up sleeping with her behind a tent. This is Kristen saying it, not me. And then literally getting on a reality show going, okay, yeah, I, I love this enough that I'll do reality TV. Like, I want to see how this, well, th how this man changes. Like I was on their show as a guest and he told me that he really like likes Jax and likes hanging out. And I was like, okay, man. And he also told me that he like hung out at Sandoval's house. Like that one night he like before the Nick bio podcast. And he was like, yeah, like, you know, that's where we wound up. And even Kristen was like, that's gross, dude. And I was like, how is this, how is this whole hap? Like, even if you're on a show, like, how do you wind up at Sandoval's house? Like, that should be just like a no go. Like you hang out with Jax all you want, but like the Sandoval, if you wound up at Sandoval's house, there's so many layers of weirdness attached. He's like, yeah, we all put on drive. We all watched it as bros together. It was crazy. Like, no, he didn't, he didn't say that, but like, what, <laughs> like, that Ryan, and then did they oh, full circle? Yeah, we, we circle jerked as bros, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I did not know that they hung out over there. That's super weird. I was, I guess, I was expecting a little more from Luke because I thought when I first saw that they were dating, I thought, oh, this will be good for Kristen because she's like a Michigan Midwestern gal. As a Minnesotan myself, Midwestern gal, she like found her like little fisherman, her outdoorsy guy, and that's probably what she needs. No more Macters. Um, but like we were talking about, I mean, this kind of reality TV and LA in general can kind of, it can corrupt anybody if you let it. Yes, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I always tell the audience, take a mental snapshot now of this cast and then see throughout the course of the season, how everybody changes, see how they come back next season. And this poor Luke, I'm just scared. He's going to like sell his 70 acres of land. I'm like, do not, that's the nest egg. Luke. Do will not come sell back. the land. Yeah. Like do not sell that land, Luke. To He's like, I'm opening a business with Jax. We're going to franchise Jax's saloon. Oh my God. Have you been to Jax's? Is it just like a back room of a real bar? Okay. So this <laughs> is what I was waiting to tell you is I don't really go out anymore. Now my friend, Mary Payne from the pink shade podcast is coming into town. She came into town today for the week and she really wanted to go out to dinner. And she said, can we go to Jax's saloon? And I said, I have not been there. I normally would not go there, 
but I will go there with you. But I also didn't realize it's tonight is the Vanderpump Rules Valley night. So there's a couple things that I am scared to death of. One, Jax will be there. Mm -hmm. Two, I'm scared that Sandoval will be there because I think they ended up singing karaoke. I mean, just talk about the seventh pit of hell. They sing like a Backstreet Boys together, like song together. Um, And so I, I, I'm going to go there and I'm going to try to have, um, a good spirit about it and do fun. But like, I got to tell you, I'm scared to death to go there. Like I'm scared. I, 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 but I, at the same time, I'm also kind of like, like, will it feel like, will will it just have a dark feeling wash over me? Will it be a weird vibe? Like what's the vibe? Like I am curious and you're right. It is a back room. Like Rocco's bar is right there. So the reason why this got opened up so quickly is because it already had a liquor license. It was already in a, it was already a place that was like set up to do this. Jax just came in and they put up the sign and decorations and stuff like that. That's why it was able to open up so quickly. Mm, okay. Cause yeah, it, I, I knew it, it looked a little strange. I was like, is it a tent? Is it a circus bar? Like what's happening? Yeah, it's like there? a bat. It's like attached to Rocco's on Ventura Boulevard and it's like attached to it. So I don't know. I've never put my eyes on it. This will be the first time I'll see if Mama's beer cheese kills me. Oh my gosh. You know? Yes. Like- you have to try it. I will eventually head and cause I check out all the establishments like during Scandival, um, like in the beginning, uh, myself, my husband and, uh, a fellow Bravo content creator, Andrew Gabor, we went to um, Schwartz and, and Sandy's for the first time. And I wanted to see like, is cause this is at the time where they're like, we're losing business and everyone's leaving these horrible reviews. And no, it, it no, was pretty full. Everything exactly. was fine. However, that one manager guy, what's his name? Not the older man, but the younger guy. Yeah. Um, I, for, um, I know exactly who you're talking about. He, he was very I started uh, talking overly, about on the show. Oh, he did. Yeah, like because I had met him once and he was really nice before Scandal broke. And I was like, you know, like all pumped up on the place. And then once, like I went on, but he was also like, I had somebody from Yelp reach out to me and said, hey, about the negative reviews, we put a freeze on all the reviews. Like we, we're a reputable that. business. Like yeah. we don't just like let that happen. So there was a freeze. Like that's like a narrative that they are telling people. Yes. And also it's it's doing fine. Like it's, it's by the way, it's, it's, it's hard to do fine. a bar and restaurant anyways, but they're doing yeah. fine. Plus it's like in a strip mall behind Franklin, like by the Gelsons, like it's not in a, in, in a great location for you. You're, you're hidden by a huge science. It's hard to move around. There's only, a, there's only so many yeah. tables. It's hard to move around. Like the, the bar is past the table. So it's like a weird space to like set up in and they put a lot of money into it. So of course they're not going to be seeing returns immediately. No bar does for usually for the first no. three to five years, but it's like, I heard like I was at BravoCon at some like party and I heard Schwartz was like up on Andy Cohen. And he's like, he was given that same sob story about Tom Tom or about uh, Schwartz and said, he's like, Oh, mm-hmm. it's real rough out there, man. It's like, it's like doing like sort of a, I don't know. Like, I don't know who to believe anymore. I think all of these people lie to each other. They lie to us. Yeah. They lie to themselves. And that's like the big concept. Um, moving ahead. What are you hoping out of the rest of the season of the Valley and Vanderpump rules? What would actually <sighs> What would make you feel good about watching these shows? And are you interested to see Ariana's boyfriend, Dan, Daniel? Pop? Yes. Yes. I can't wait because I saw the mid season trailer and I do see Daniel and I see Ariana or not Ariana Lala saying, you know, um, would you talk to him or if he comes up to you and then you, you see Daniel go, I know what he did. And I'm like, Oh, Daniel with your long hair. I would love to see Daniel punch him. I don't advocate violence except for when I advocate violence. Um, I wouldn't mind to see a little <laughs> WrestleMania with Daniel, but no, I hope Daniel pays him dust. I see that Sandoval goes up and shakes it like you're so yeah weird, bro. Well, hey what's so up dude gross. you hey do you ever been to burning man dude you ever been to oh i think gosh. this would be hey uh sometimes i'll feed my roommate potato chips under the door daniel what's up dude do you eat potato chips i'll leave some under the door for you dude come on oh shake my hand oh you know uh, it just creepy honestly i am not really looking forward to anything because we've had so many spoilers now knowing that Ariana and Lala are essentially going to be in a fight at the reunion when there are two Toms there that can be fought with, but they're going to fight with each other. Okay. And, um, I guess I'm excited to see the San Francisco trip because it'll be really the first time we've seen Tom and Ariana in the same space. And they're on that boat, similar to Roni when they almost died. It seems like they're going to have an experience like that. Um, but the, so Vanderpump, I'm just, it's just going to continue well, to be therapy sessions on my channel. And I'm we just- We have two big storylines coming up though, though. We still have the Sheena potentially making out with oh, yeah. Vegas. 
And we have that Schwartz and Katie going over for the same girl, that the potential so nanny of Sheena. And that's like, to me, Sheena promised me that that's a very real thing, that that's like, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. But she got, I mean, I will say this, and I know it's like, she looks really young. Like she looks really yeah. young. In and I know that's, it's just weird. It's super weird. Now we know Schwartz's girlfriend now is like 23 years old, but Joe's still hanging on. Um, is that, <laughs> he said three years. He said to give him three years. <laughs> oh. I'm going to do, I'm going to wait. I'm crazy. I'm going to wait I'm on the swan boats. Oh. And you know, she's one of those people that like, like searches for the DMs of people saying that they should be together. Oh my God. Thank you. I think so too. Thank well, you for thinking that. Yes, on her social media, I noticed that she'll, heart pe people that will say things that you know the comments of them that they'll say that they'll end up together and did you see she posted that like love letter to tom schwartz and how can't guys and girls Ooh. be friends it's like not when they have sex not when the p goes in the v they can't i'm sorry that's not how it well, works you're always gonna have a feeling it is that thing like if the p didn't go like it is it's just such a weird thing because you can tell like she is madly mad i don't even think it's real that's love good. but she's madly in something for him and he's like Oh, we're just like special friends for life. Like that's yeah. it. That's what we are. Special friends. And like, I'll laugh at all of your weird jokes and like, you're weird. Like I'm weird. And like, that's great. And she believes ever like she, like I've been there before. She wants to believe in it so badly. She wants mm -hmm. to believe and she is completely blind and she's not going to see it for a very long time. But like who writes a post for Schwartz of like, I realize I'm not the girl for him. Maybe some like she like literally bashes herself in the same post of like, I get it. Why I'm not for him right now. I just found that so that sad on top of sad. It is sad. And that just shows how much LA stunts you emotionally. And having lived there for a long time, I realized that because she, this woman's in her thirties writing that Tom is like damn near 50, both the Toms, you know what I mean? And so if, if he's at this stage and he's like, I need four years, he's never going to be ready. Like you just don't write those kind of things. That's like early twenties, teenager posts. And I think she might've deleted it. Uh, cause it was, it's it's embarrassing joe is coming on i think joe will settle into her wanting to be a victim like the toms want to be a victim that's why she gets along with them is they kind of well, want to be victims schwartz is like a sweet creep and tom is a creep creep like tom is like matthew yes. mcconaughey and dazed and confused They're like all right all right all right all right these girls you know uh i keep getting <laughs> I stay older. the same these girls stay the same age you know like it's so it's so bizarre and like even tom is supposed sandoval is allegedly in a relationship now too with some model like, like leonardo to capture leo's ex and she's a how hot does that even work i mean like i imagine <sighs> the conversations these people have um listen tell everybody like what you do every week on your channel like is there like a daily thing people can expect like how does it all work for you um, well, I cover lots of shows, lots of topics, do commentary, roasts and recaps. We definitely cover all of the Vanderpump rules. Uh, the next day after it airs, I will go live and we just, we just roast and we recap. I saw that. So like all those people show up to watch you live and they can comment, they yes, can super so comment. Fun. Like I, I was noticing that when I did your show a long time ago and it was so cool and you'll like have a conversation with them, but then you recap, you put the pictures up. So there's visuals, you do the imitations, like it's a full on it's like uh, you know it's like adele in vegas it's like a full production oh my gosh ryan <laughs> like, that's don't give me so much <laughs> such a nice compliment that's and also i'm my like tom sandoval in the most extra show you're like an adele <laughs> concert so but you do that right after and then the rest of the week you just like do pop culture pop shows culture. i have a show i do called no offense all offense uh and i cover all kinds of you know topics and and shows and things and we just hit at it but i like the live i do edited videos as well um or pre-recorded but i I like the live version because it as a live performer it makes me feel like i'm performing stand-up in my office you know sometimes so and What's i love interacting like being a stand up too like how did that like i mean like so i mean are you out there every night like hitting the hitting the clubs no. like how does it go I use, I was definitely pre pandemic. That was, you know, the norm. And then, uh, during the pandemic is when I really started settling into this online creation where becoming, you know, a uh, content creator, I had, I had a channel already, but it, you know, went, I got a lot more subscribers through the pandemic and started, you know, we did online stand up zoom shows, which are not good, oh but I'm God. starting, <laughs> I'm starting yeah. to get myself back in a stand up um, schedule and I'm, I'm, I'm booking some tour dates and then also I'm going to record my album this year. So, Oh my God. I, I definitely have, um, I've set goals for myself, but you know, it, it, it was kind of hard to get back out there after the pandemic. Cause it's like, I can just 
have all this fun from my office right here. and I don't have to yeah. travel and I have dogs now and I don't really want to leave them and I'm in my forties. So it's not like I'm, you know, on that like 20, early 30 grind. I'm kind of like, I like my house. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was so, I watching last night? They were like, I love this space. I want to be in this space that I created more. What was I just watching last night that I was like, yeah, that's it. Like, you know, you set up this space that you want to be in and it's, Oh no, you know what? It was a, uh, it was a documentary on Martha Stewart on CNN. And she was like talking about like, she had went, was on wall street and then she was like a, became like a homemaker, you know, but like she was like planting trees and then she started a catering company. But she was like, I got so into this period of time of creating a home, creating our family and creating this place that I didn't want to leave. So she started a business, a catering business out of her home. And I just thought it was, it was truly fascinating. I was like, just turned it on randomly and it was so it good. It's interesting how you're, uh, you know, cause me and my husband lived in, lived in West Hollywood for years. We were both grinding as like stand up comics and he was an improviser and doing these shows at second city. And then the pandemic hit and we found our way out to Palm Springs and we ended up buying That's where you're at right here. now. You're Palm yeah. Springs. Yeah. We oh, bought our wow. first home out here. We, we, we rescued some dogs. My husband's now in nursing school. Like our lives completely changed, changed after that. So, uh, but I'm finding my way. I still do shows, but I'm, I used to, uh, uh, produce a show at the Hollywood improv every month, but, um, I had to step away cause I'm, I'm so far yeah. away, even though it's like two hour drive, but, um, yeah, so I'm finding my way back as I, I stand up is just like, once you do it, I mean, I feel like you've done stand up before Ryan. Don't you do stand up? There was a, I think everybody at LA is like, there was a period of like a, a, a year period where I tried and like, you know, and it was like, it was like, I did like, I was one of those people that like first time killed it. Like first time yeah. out of the gate. And I was like, well, this isn't too hard. This is pretty <laughs> good. Wow. Look at me. And I was like, I got a, I did a comedy store thing and I did like, I did. And then finally, I think on the eighth time I bombed, like I bombed in a way where I didn't even like where you're realizing you're bombing. My body turned to water and like, it was, <laughs> it like shook me to my core. Like it shook yeah. me. Like I just didn't even expect it. I got a little cocky. And then I remember I got caught in the mic cord. Like I was trolled up and I was oh, no. going backstage with the mic and I was like, give me the fuck out of this thing. Give me the fuck <laughs> out of like an Eric Andre had just gone on before me. Oh, and I was like, Oh fuck. Oh, and I never went back to 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 do it again and also like i got divorced too and some of my like things were about like my relationship and like it it, it taught me a lot of lessons but no it's it, you guys are such I, I i'm a comedy geek but i i don't think that's i'm built for that ever like that bomb well you like, you give off, off standup vibes so if you ever want to go back i think you i think you should well, i think if it if, it if bites you ever you, do a you show know. out here or you know like a storyteller show or something yeah but anyways Jolene Lunzer, I'm so sorry I took all of your time, but I could talk no, to you I for so hours. And Thank I think you. this is why people truly love you. But to those listening out there, go watch her on YouTube. Go subscribe. Go see what she's all about because – Listen, I'm here doing my own silly, stupid stuff, but like I'm telling you, she does like this really awesome, hysterical, beautiful show with graphics, and I'm it really impresses me. And she's got such a cool fan base, and I think you can even get that bigger and bigger and bigger. So uh, it is so awesome to finally have you on this show. If you ever want to come back, just let me know. Uh, the the door is always open, and uh, if you ever need somebody on yours, I'm always willing to do this because I'm going to have you fantastic. back. Fantastic. Yes, because yeah, now please. we have to go back and forth, please. back and forth, because last time please. was so fun. And people, I'd love that people are requesting that we collab because there's Yo, not you, a lot we of have people. a mutual uh, fan, Christina Byington, will like on a weekly basis be like, You got to talk to Jolene Lunzer. And I was like, <laughs> I I, And then finally she said it this week. I said, Listen, you might you might be in luck this week. You just uh, stay tuned, Christina. You might be in luck because I think Jolene might be coming. So Jolene is here. Yay. Um, you are fantastic. Jolene Lunzer, everybody. I'm going to put all of her information, follow her on Instagram, go to her YouTube, all of that good stuff. And thank you for doing the hard work with Scandable. Thank you. You too, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs>